on the season finale of Confidential on BFTV. Multi-hyphenated social media star and it girl, Aaliyah's interlude, prepares for a performance of her viral hit. Plus, we discuss all the details of her life before social media stardom. So would you venture out beyond fashion as far as your career now that you have this huge platform? Oh, definitely. I want to do music, like something never before seen. That's what I want to do, and that's what I'm going to do this summer. So make sure y'all watch out for that. Aaliyah's interlude was just a teenage college student when she began using TikTok to share her comedic, uplifting messages. I'm confused. Y'all talking about the queen died, but I'm literally right here in Brooklyn. And also showcase her alternative style that fuses kawaii, harajuku, and Y2K subcultures. Her campy fashion has garnered a lot of attention and controversy on social media, but it all helped her amass a following of more than 3 million followers across all platforms. Her personality and style has landed her so many media and fashion opportunities beyond social media in just a year. Back in April this year, I spoke to the IT girl herself, and we talked about everything everything from her life growing up to her future career goals. I just started dressing up kind of as like a defense mechanism because I got bullied a lot growing up. And Since then, she started countless campaigns for brands such as MAC Cosmetics and Heaven by Marc Jacobs, walked in fashion shows, made an appearance in Doja Cat's music video, and released an unexpected viral hit that debuted at number one on the global Spotify Viral 100 chart. I you know I am that girl. Shh, bitch, don't kiss and, tell. and we were present in November when she joined Mona Lisa's tour stop in her hometown of Atlanta to perform It Girl. This is Aaliyah's interludes rise to It Girl. <laughs> Aaliyah's interlude in this bitch. You already know. I'm actually gonna cry, so. Aaliyah Court today, tomorrow, yesterday, and forever. Period. you're West African. Mm -hmm. I want to know about the real Aaliyah, like your upbringing, mm -hmm. your background. Who is Aaliyah's interlude? Yes. Oh my gosh. Who is Aaliyah's interlude? That is such like a big question. But I would say if we're talking about like my upbringing, I grew up, I'm like the first generation to um, grow up in America. Like my parents are from Sierra Leone. They came here when I when they were like in their 20s or something. And I grew up here, but I always used to go back home to Sierra Leone like every summer when I was a kid, go to the beach. I remember, ah, oh, 
I'm having flashbacks. Oh my God. But yes, but I grew up in Clayton County, Georgia. I moved to Fed when I was like 10 or 11. I live in Atlanta now, but I've always been in Georgia. I'm from the South, like mm -hmm. through and through. So what was your school life and interacting with peers like? Oh my gosh. Okay, so from kindergarten up until I was in like fifth grade, I went to an all black school. And that school was like uniforms, Christian. We did devotion in the morning time. Like it was so crazy. But after that, I had switched over. I went to this new county and it was like almost an all white school. But in this school, like it was like you could wear whatever you wanted as long as it was in dress code, of course. So at this place, that's where I started like really discovering like what I wanted to do style wise and fashion wise, but I've been thrifting since I've been like six years old. So I've always been having like those unique pieces that not everyone could get. Just because when you go thrifting, you can find like a one of one. But right. like when you go on a store, like anybody could get what you got. Mm -hmm. So that's why I love thrifting. And then there, I just started dressing up kind of as like, a defense mechanism because I got bullied a lot growing up and this was like even before I started wearing what I was wearing like just because I was a dark-skinned girl you know they, you know they would pick on you for anything but yeah I was one of the only dark-skinned girls in like my entire class type of thing so I got picked on a lot and I feel like when I started dressing nice people started respecting me more and they were like okay she got that on like period so yeah, I guess that turned into, I don't know, my love of flash, fashion just grew as I got older, if that makes sense. And you're very well-spoken and mm -hmm. outgoing. Yes. Was this always you in school mm -hmm. or did your experiences kind of force you into being this larger than life human being? Oh my gosh, this was not always me. I used to be so shy. I used to be like the girl that would be like, by herself in a corner, like had two or three friends, never more than that because I just hated talking to people. Like I used to be so shy and you could not get me to do anything type of thing. But now it's like, because of social media, it's like I'm still a shy person, but because of social media, I can't really be that shy. So, cause people come up to me and stuff like that. But yeah, this is not how I always been at all. Mm -hmm. Were there like any other black girls that you looked up to on TV? I really looked up to Kiki Palmer. I love Kiki Palmer like growing up and even Issa Rae because I used to be, I used to be like that high schooler that was watching all them grown shows like Insecure and stuff like that. So I watched Insecure and I love Issa Rae and I love how she like um, does everything at once and she produces, she writes, directs and I want to get in that bag basically. But also, um, like Vashti, Alaylee May, so many, so many girls I looked up to. And before TikTok came in the picture, like, what were your plans for the future? Oh, school, I don't know. Oh my gosh, yes. Yes, I was in school for business. I didn't, I just chose business because I really didn't even know what I wanted to do for real. And I felt like that was the most, like, you could do anything with a business degree. So I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do business. And honestly, I really just went to school for my parents. I never really wanted to go to college or none of that, but I dropped out after the first year. I knew it wasn't for me. I was like, I know that I want to do something that's not this. So yeah, I just wanted to go to school. I had no idea what I wanted to do though at all. Now in your early TikTok days, I saw you recording videos at your job. You were like wearing an apron. <laughs> Where were you, what jobs were you working? Oh my gosh. No, I worked at Bar Taco. I've worked at the aquarium, racetrack, cookie store, McDonald's, which is so crazy because McDonald's sends me stuff now, but I used to work at McDonald's like, and I would um, come from high school, after school I would be at work, like while all the other kids was going to parties and stuff, but I was a shy girl, so I never used to go. So I used to be at work, like just slaving down, but <laughs> thank you, those times are gone. Right? Like I'm so <laughs> grateful, honestly. Let us pray. 
pretty fast paced, but it's still slower than New York. Uh, I don't know. Atlanta's gonna have New York, New York, and Houston, Houston. But I feel like Houston and Atlanta is similar in like aesthetics and shit. Yeah. Like Puka, lamb chops, you know. Because gonna come out with Leo today, and it's about to be a movie. Period. Yeah. How did you find your way to TikTok? How did that become your creative outlet? Quite honestly, it was never supposed to be like that. I feel like I came to TikTok on some like just having fun type of thing. But once I seen that people really liked me for me, I was like, shoot, we might as well like do it the whole way because I knew that I saw like a lot of other creators making a whole career out of it. And I was like, if I could do this for a living, like that would be so fire. Cause I love fashion. I love like just speaking my mind. So I knew that I was gonna do something along the lines of that for sure. My first viral, viral video, it was just me telling girls, I was like, you know you're that girl, right? Like, I don't know why you be doubting yourself, like, cause you are that girl, period. And it was really like a note to self, to be honest. But when I posted it, I had woke up and it had like a million views. And at that point in my career, I was like, a million views? Like, that's a lot, I really like that. So yeah. And what year was this? This was like 2021, like super recently. Okay, so two years ago. Mm -hmm. And your life has transformed this much. Completely, and it's crazy because I feel like a lot of people think my life transformed like a long time ago, but I really just started reaping like the benefits of all of the fruits that I put into labor. Actually, I don't know what to say, I'm sorry. I don't know what to say, but <laughs> yes, I really just started reaping the benefits of everything just now, to be honest. And then you became known for your fashion. What is Aaliyah Core. Oh my gosh. Aaliyah Core is a lifestyle. It's not caring about being perceived, not caring about what other people think of you because you know yourself and you know you're that person. Whether you're a girl or a guy, don't identify, it doesn't matter. But I just feel like Aaliyah Core in general is just a style which is a mixture of Harajuku, streetwear, Y2K, rave, like it's everything into one. I, got, I get influences from all things, but yeah. We have the essentials, which are like the fishnets, the garter, earmuffs or fur, um, fur on the legs too, and we love a good boot, but it doesn't have to include a boot. So there's always been these conversations about the lack of opportunities that black girls get, because we see all of the white social media girls getting to be fashion icons, mm -hmm. they're at the Met Gala and attending all of these events. But now you've come around and you're getting some of those opportunities. I saw you closing for Moa Lola. Yes. I follow I Am Gia mm -hmm. and I was like, is that Aaliyah? <laughs> <laughs> so let's break it down. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the Moa Lola opportunity. How did that come about? Because not everybody gets to close a fashion right. show and a lot of the main model girls want to close a fashion show. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? Okay, so basically me and Moa Lola have been mutuals for a minute because it's so wild. Like I literally, we became mutuals because when I had like less than 10,000 followers, I would tag her in my story because I used to wear a lot of clothes inspired by her outfits. And I would tag her in my story. And one time she seen it, she was like, oh my gosh, like you're so cute. And she had followed me. And ever since then, like she had sent me some Moa Lola stuff and like some earrings. And I was just like in love with, I've been in love with her clothes since forever. But she had posted about her fashion show. And I was like, wait, she having a fashion show? Like, I didn't know where it was or anything. And I swiped up and I was like, I would love to attend your fashion show if you have any more like seats available. And she was like, nah, like you need to walk the show. And I was like, period, yeah. And this was Paris? This was London. Oh, London Fashion Week. Yes, London Week. Fashion okay. Week. But it was crazy because um, I didn't know I was closing the show until I got there and I did my fitting and she, I seen like the order of everything. Actually, I didn't know. I might have not known until the day of the show, actually, that I was cl closing the show. And mind you, this is my first ever fashion show, like, in eternity. So I was like, oh my gosh, like, I'm closing this. I gotta work. And I worked, so. Yeah, yeah you did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, were you nervous? Because you were wearing, like, little to mm -hmm. that down the runway. Exactly. <laughs> I was... I wasn't nervous just because I like do runway type of walks in my videos all the time. So I knew I was gonna like slay. But at the same time, I was just kind of nervous because I knew there was a lot of people out there that were like, I follow on Instagram and like, they're like big people too. So I was like, I don't know, like da 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 da. But everyone ate it up. So I don't even know why I was nervous, quite honestly. 
And then you came right back to the States and you styled Lizzo. Yes. <laughs> How did that even happen? Honestly, okay, so Lizzo had made a video to one of my sounds and this was like January 1st, I made a sound. I was like, for all of y'all who are tired of Aaliyah Core, just know this is supposed to be my most camp outlandish era yet. So if you don't like me now, y'all definitely about to hate me in 2023. And she had made a video to that sound and she was wearing moon boots and she was like in this tropical place. And if you know, I had got dragged from wearing moon boots on the beach. So it was like her just doing Aaliyah Core, if that makes sense. So. From that video, she also has a company called Yiddy, and they had reached out to me and they were like, Lizzo would love for you to style her in Aaliyah Core with her clothes. And I was like, oh, for sure, like, period. I'll be out there, just let me know when. And they flew me out, I styled her, and yeah, that's just how that went. She's amazing, by the way. I really love Lizzo. Thank you for that opportunity, because right. I'm, I'm still gagging. Okay, 
okay, speaking of moon boots on the beach, mm -hmm. that was like your first <laughs> controversy. Yes, first of many, like. The picture seen around Twitter yes. and on TikTok, you were wearing moon boots and a bikini. Yes. And, and a pink wig on the beach. Mm -hmm. And people dragged you for it, like. That. What was that experience like? Honestly, I felt like it made me realize how big I actually was. Because I feel like if this many people are talking about you, and like, they're talking about you, but there's like hundreds of thousand people defending you also, like, you're just bound for stardom. You're bound to be that girl. Because I feel like no true it girl hasn't faced some sort of like worldwide or online controversy. So I was like, yeah, like, I'm definitely going on the right path. For all the people that were sick about the moon boots on the beach, prepare to be sick of me in 2023 because this is going to be my most camp era yet. The year of Aaliyah Corp. Like, come on, come on. But I was actually surprised. Like, when I had seen people dragging me, I was like confused just because of the fact that I always wear crazy stuff on Instagram. So I guess they wasn't used to it on Twitter. And it was at the beach. But I'm like, I'm known for my camp looks. Like, I thought y'all would be like already knowing how I'm coming. But apparently not people had issues with it for sure and then from there mm -hmm. i feel like you've experienced a lot mm -hmm. of other unwarranted hate like the criticism of Aaliyah core mm -hmm. as you know people take issue to it because mm -hmm. people are like well you didn't create that style mm -hmm. and you're claiming ownership of something that you were inspired by but like yeah. how do you respond to that I respond to it by saying, like, I feel like in almost all of my videos where I explain Aaliyah Kaur, I always say that I take inspiration from so many different aesthetics and, like, subcultures. And the difference between Aaliyah Kaur and those is because it's not just one, like, subculture. It's, like, so many combined together. And I think, like, what just proves that is just the fact that when a lot of people say stuff like that, they were like, oh, this is just Y2K, or this is just Rave, this is just Kawhi, Harajuku. But it's like, everybody's saying different things, which means y'all obviously peep that, like, it's not just one thing. It's like a combination of styles put into one. And honestly, with fashion, just like history repeats itself all the time. People create things that are new, but have already been, like, known before. You just revolutionize it by making it your own, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Has any of the criticism ever gotten to you? Honestly? Okay, as I said before, I got bullied like all through school, whether it was high school, middle school, elementary, I've been bullied my entire life. I don't know, I just feel like I'm used to it, like if that makes sense, which sucks because like I don't think anyone should be used to stuff like that, but I've been receiving criticism for the way I look, the way I dress since I've been like out the womb type of thing. So I'm just kind of experiencing it on a vast, like level now but it's not something that I'm not new or not something that I'm new to. I, looking back I used to like be so like depressed and sad when that stuff would happen to me but now I realize that if that didn't happen to me I probably would be in shambles right now to be honest so I'm just grateful for it all. And like you know with the lack of alternative black girls being amplified has that inspired you to be that icon mm -hmm. that other alternative black girls can look to? Most definitely, because people hit me up all the time and they tell me like, oh, you're the reason why I started dressing like how I actually wanted to dress because I never seen like black girls like do it so like authentically and out in the open and telling other girls to do it too. Because, you know, I feel like a lot of times with um, black people, we aren't really used to like, just like the whole alternative style being some everyday thing. Like it's either you dress up like that or do like this, but it's like some people dress like this every single day. And you know, I think we should be open to people just doing whatever they want, quite honestly. But yeah, I know a lot of girls look up to me and a lot of girls are inspired by me. And that definitely keeps me going.
get management until I hit a million followers on TikTok. And I see a lot of my white counterparts or um, mutuals have management with like 300K followers, 200K, even 100K followers. And they're making like lots of money too. So I think it took such a long time for me to monetize myself or to get opportunities that I know I'm deserving of. Or even to this day, there's so many like opportunities that I know I'm deserving of, but because um, the people in those rooms choosing the um, content creators or the fashion girls for it don't look like me, that means like a lot of times that I won't get the opportunity just because of that. But I feel like now my audience is so diverse to the point where I'm now getting opportunities because it's not just a certain look of a girl that's looking at my content now. It's like worldwide, if that makes sense. And your life has changed tremendously. I think ever since my socials in general blew up, I've just been traveling a lot. I've been, you know, going to fashion weeks and that's something that like I really manifested and I've always wanted for myself. And I've just been, you know, meeting so many people I look up to like Lizzo, Rico Nasty, BK The Rule. Like I love all these people and I've been listening to them since I've been like younger. So I was just like, I'm just really happy. And just seeing a lot of people that I look up to like really, really fuck with me, like honestly. <laughs> That's just how I feel. Oh my gosh. No, literally at first my parents, I wouldn't say they weren't supportive, but they definitely were not supportive of me dropping out of school. Nobody was. So a lot of people were like, you should wait till you're stable on social media. But I always knew I was gonna succeed. So it was like, yeah, y'all can't see it now, but like I see what I want for myself. But my parents were not supportive, but now they're super supportive of everything that I do. Like they wanna help me become the person that I wanna be like this upcoming year and just like forever. So I'm super grateful, honestly. Yeah, that's really good. Mm-hmm. You know I am that girl. Bitch, don't kiss and tell. Now, what type of companies or designers you would like to work with in the future? Oh my gosh. I wanna work with Dominico. I wanna work with Blue Marine, so bad. Mirror Palai. A lot of more designer, like Coach. I know Coach has a Babe collab. I wanna work with Babe. A lot of streetwear brands. Just everything. And I wanna start my own business too. Like what? I wanna start my own business. And I just want to like really make it on some like streetwear, but high fashion type of thing. Like that's really what I wanna do. Hey y'all, just more. so cute and late. Period. We love all of y'all. So would you venture out beyond fashion as far as your career now that you have this huge platform? Oh, definitely. I want to do music, like make music, but not in like the typical type of way. I want to be like producing music, like a DJ type of thing, but like on some like really cut camp, Harajuku like type of thing, like something never before seen. That's what I want to do. And that's what I'm going to do this summer. So make sure y'all watch out for that. Yes. <laughs> I'm really excited. Thank you so much Me for doing too. this. Thank you. I really appreciate you. I really appreciate you too. And make sure y'all check out this show, everything. Like the setup, everything is just amazing. And I'm so happy for you, honestly. Thank you so much for joining yes. BFTV of Confidential. Course.